Well, folks, it's the best time of the year. We are one day away from the first round of the NCAA tournament. My name is Jason Canander. He is Tommy Yarish here with the Hook of Hoops podcast on the field of 68. And Tommy, it's a big day for Texas basketball as we finally know who the Longhorns are going to be playing now in the first round of the tournament. This is after Colorado State just beat the brakes off of Virginia in the playing game last night in Dayton. Now the Longhorns will take on Colorado State in the 7-10 game tomorrow night in Charlotte. Your rapid thoughts. Well, Jason, I don't know if last night's game between Colorado State and Virginia was more Colorado State walloping Virginia or if it was Virginia just walloping themselves. I mean, one of the most poor offensive performances, even by Virginia standards, that mm. I've seen in a long time. They shot 25% from the field, 14 of 56. They went 3 of 17 from 3 and then 11 of 17 from the line. So they got a fourth of their points from the free throw line, basically, which is like n- something you never want to do. But what stands out to me the most, Jason, is that they got out-rebounded 43 to 24. I mean, you don't see that a lot from Tony Bennett's teams, especially considering how good defensively they've been. Uh, but alas, it, it. I mean, there was questions about Virginia being in the tournament this year. And when we saw them in there, you know, it's like, oh, I mean – maybe because of their track record in the past, but even, I guess, you know, maybe aside from the 2019 national championship, you kind of question that track record. And it's easy to say in retrospect now that they shouldn't have been in the tournament, but this, you know, this loss kind of proves why maybe another school like uh, Indiana state or St. John's or um, I'm blanking on any of the others right now, Oklahoma, any any of the big East schools would have made a better game last year. It it probably would have made it a better game, but you also do have to credit, Colorado State. And what's the, the biggest thing for me is that Isaiah Stevens only scored five points in this game and they won by 25. I mean, that's that's pretty impressive. And that says a lot about this Colorado State team for me, Jason. That's pretty terrifying. It's pretty terrifying. Yeah. You know, at first when I when I saw, you know, I'll admit last night, this game was slow. This game, you know, we everyone's got a lot going on in March. And so I may or may not have passed out during the under 12 timeout of the second half. It was a blowout at that point. Don't you worry, I'm all caught, up, all caught up on the highlights today. But this morning, actually, when I woke up and the first thing that I saw was that Isaiah Stevens scored five points, I was like, oh, he must have had a bad game. But he didn't. He just wasn't shooting. Other guys were making shots. Colorado State shot over 50% from the field. They shot 35% from three. Their offense looked fantastic last night. And the two things from last night that worry me for tomorrow are – won the rebound margin that you mentioned. And not just the fact that they out-rebounded Virginia that much. It was who was grabbing rebounds. Uh, Neat Clifford, who is already a big guard for Colorado State. He had a nice game. He's a thick, thick guard, and he grabbed 10 rebounds. Uh, No Texas guard this season has grabbed 10 rebounds. And so that in of itself scares me. Jalen Scott um, was another – Joel Scott, excuse me, um, senior Juco guy from Colorado State – He's a forward. He had 11 rebounds. He actually had 23 and 11 last night. And so Colorado State isn't the team that people have painted them to be throughout the season in the sense that they go as Isaiah Stevens goes. Like, yeah, maybe that's true when they're on the road playing in a raucous road environment in the Mountain West. But I don't think that that's necessarily true in the NCAA tournament when they have other seniors who can make shots. I'm worried about how Texas is going to defend Patrick Cartier. Patrick Cartier had 12 points last night, but he hit two threes. That's a big forward who can stretch the floor. I don't think Texas has somebody who can defend him one-on-one. Dylan DeSue struggles one-on-one, especially on the perimeter. Caden Shedrick can't guard the perimeter. I'm worried about how Texas is going to guard the free ball on Thursday. I'm not as worried about Isaiah Stevens, though, because he can light the top off this thing. And if Max Hastings does the same thing, then we're even. And then it's a shootout. And do I like Texas in a shootout? Not most nights, but in a tournament setting where they're just as experienced as Colorado State. Maybe I do like that. And so, yeah, Colorado State won by 25. Yeah, they gave up 42 points. But I actually feel better about this than I would have felt if Virginia had won, you know, 47 to 42. Because then I'm like, okay, Texas is going to get beat at their own game. They're not going to be able to score. And someone on Virginia is going to hit a big shot. Now, Colorado State, it looks like this could maybe shape up to be a little bit more of a shootout. I like that for Texas. I do like that for Texas. And so 
there was a lot last night to take away from, especially, you know, three seniors on Colorado State, you know, being in double figures. Their best players, their big dogs, their veterans are going to step up. Texas is going to need the same thing. So we know A. Smith is going to need to have a big game. He's done it in March. We know DeSue is going to need to have a big game. He's done it in March. Tommy, if Texas wants to move on to the second round with win against Colorado State tomorrow, who needs to be that unsung hero of sorts for Texas? It's the same guy that it's been all season, Jason. I've always said that the team, Texas is going to go as far as Tyrese Hunter takes them. Mm. If Tyrese Hunter has a good game, then Texas might win this game by double digits. If he's in the 15 to 20 point range, like he has been in certain spurts this season. But if he's having a slow day where he's not knocking down those shots and he only has two to four points, like he has at some points this year, then things get infinitely more difficult. So, Tyrese Hunter, for me, is going to have to have a big game. I think you can also throw Dylan Mitchell into that Mm. category. He's going to be by far the most athletic guy on the floor. Usually he is, but especially in this game, he's going to be the most athletic guy on the floor by a country mile. So that speed, that athleticism is going to have to show up big in this game for the Longhorns. And I think he's going to have to have a good rebounding game, too. This should be a double-double game for Dylan Mitchell, in my Mm. opinion, just because... Mm of how he can move up and down the floor uh, with his speed. Now, you know, as far as the rest of the offensive arsenal for Texas, like you said, you know, Max Asmus and Dylan Nassou are made for March. They always show up in March. So you don't really worry too much about that on the offensive side of the ball. But on the defensive side of things, we've talked about it all season. Texas is what they are defensively. And, you know, that's great and all. But I highly doubt Isaiah Stevens is only going to score five points or he's, I'm, I highly doubt he's going to score five or less in this in this next game. Like he's going to have oh, yeah. double digit score in my opinion. Um, but can Texas limit the supporting cast? Can they limit Joel Scott? Can they limit Patrick Cartier? If they're able to do that, then things get a little bit different, and this game kind of shapes up. But you know, Jason, this is maybe a kind of a touche like coach speak esque thing that I find a, a very interesting detail, but maybe others don't. I think that the way Nico Medved has structured this roster is extremely interesting because so much talent coming from the JUCO, D3, D2 levels, Mm -hmm. all kind of mixed in together at Colorado (laughs) State. This is a really hungry team. They have something to (laughs) prove. Like they they came to Colorado State to show that they can play high-level Division I basketball and that they can win games against, you know, other NCAA tournament teams, and they have a prime opportunity to do that on Thursday night. So I think that is a real factor in this game. How bad does Texas want to win this game, and can that match Colorado State's want of winning this game? I think there are some things in the Longhorns' favor in the sense that they've got a long break, and I think you mentioned this either on the last episode or the episode before where Texas plays really good coming off of time periods where they have a long rest. And on the flip side for Colorado State, they only have one day to prepare for Texas. Maybe they've done some preparation and anticipation of them winning the game, but I can't imagine that Nico Medved would devote a significant amount of time to that when they have to game prep for Virginia. So those things lean in Texas's favor, but you're right, Jason. This is a game that I think Longhorn fans should be worried about. This is a game that they definitely can lose if they don't come ready to play. Well, it's March, you know, of course they could lose. It could be Longwood or St. Peter's or Grambling State on the other side. And, you know, we'd still be talking about it, talking about how they could lose the game. And there were obviously a lot of signs last night when Colorado State wins by 25. Like, yeah, if this happens on Thursday, Texas is probably screwed. My answer to my question on who the X Factor is, it's Caden Shedrick for me. This guy went off in the NCAA tournament last year. He nearly single-handedly willed Virginia to that win over Furman. He had, I want to say, was 16 points and 12 rebounds and three blocks. He had arguably his best game of college was last year against Furman in the round of 64. And I talked to Caden after the first round game in the Big 12 tournament that Texas lost. And, you know, I asked him, I said, how are you feeling? How is your, you know, is it true that this is the healthiest that you've been this year? And he said, yeah, that's absolutely true. I'm feeling great, ready to get out there. And the thing that he said that really caught my, my, caught my, raised my eyebrows. And uh, he didn't, I didn't even need to ask him. I was going to ask him, but he brought it up himself. He said he is hungry from last year's NCAA tournament, left a horrible taste in his mouth, 
He thinks about it all the time. I think Caden Shedrick's going to have a big game on Thursday because when you look at the way that this Colorado State team is structured, yeah, it's interesting they have these JUCO guys and these guys who really want it. But the thing that actually stands out the most to me when I look at that roster, Tommy, they have three forwards on the entire roster, including walk-ons, and only two of the forwards play more than five minutes a night. And so those two forwards being Joel Scott and Patrick Cartier. And so Texas has the height advantage. And this is big because we know that usually when Texas out-rebounds a team, they win. And if they out-rebound Colorado State on Thursday – they're probably going to win. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM lines to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 all through the NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD, and you will get up to a $1,500 first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not that bet hits here's the best part all you need to do is deposit and bet ten dollars of your hard-earned money this is how you make it work download the bet mgm app and sign up using the bonus code field deposit at least ten dollars and place your first wager on any game and you get up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your bet just make sure you use that bonus code field when you sign up most importantly we do have some fun stuff coming for the conference tournaments and especially for the ncaa tournament bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boost and what i love the most a nice parlay boost for anything you could possibly imagine betting on in the ncaa tournament from odds and getting an at-large bid to final four futures to the highest seed to make to the sweet 16 i'm calling it right now bet mgm is the king of the prop bet for your March Madness needs. So go download the BetMGM app, use the code FIELD, and sign up today. And while I've got you a quick request, the best way to support the Field of 68 and our content you get for free is to engage with us. Rate and review the pod. Like and share the YouTube videos. Tell your friends about us. It helps in a world where the algorithm is king. And now, back to the show. And so, keep going. No, no, no. Sorry. Just one more thing. The other thing too, that they, that they have kind of in their favor is that Colorado state is very similar to them in their rotation. Mm -hmm. They don't use Mm -hmm. their bench very much. Nico Medved used like eight players on his bench this last game because he was up by 25 with a minute to go. Like, obviously you can't take your guys out of the game. And the bench, the bench still only scored eight points. The bench still only scored eight points. Yeah. That was my interjection. Go ahead. Please keep, please continue. That could be a padlock stat, though, for Texas. If they out-rebound Colorado State and, like, they get stumping off the bench, like if Kendall Weaver scores eight points or Brock Cunningham hits a pair of open threes, like, again, obviously Caden Shedrick could still be coming off the bench. Like, if Texas gets double digits off the bench, they're going to be in this game. They're absolutely going to be in this game because they actually do have a lineup that matches Colorado State pretty well. Dylan DeSue isn't a good perimeter defender. But if Colorado State tries to score in the post with Cartier and Scott, DeSue and Shedrick can possibly cause some problems. I think that Neat Clifford is the biggest mismatch in this game for Texas just because he's a 6'6 guard and he rebounds really well. And he also shoots it well. He shot 7 of 12 from the field last night, including a three-pointer. So Texas is going to need to contain him. But I think Stevens and Aismith uh, sort of even each other out. And then the supporting casts even each other out. Texas has the size advantage. Plus, they've been there before. The last thing that I really think about this Colorado State team, Nico Medved might have just punched his ticket to another campus with that win last night. He was probably already gone after this year with the amount of seniors that they have. But for all we know, right now, he could be on the phone with the AD at the University of Michigan or at West Virginia or at... Louisville, and he could be having conversations on his next stop just because the team's in it doesn't necessarily mean that their coach is locked in. Now, obviously, these are all speculation. We're not on that team flight. We're not in that locker room. We don't have sources with the Colorado State program, so we don't know. But odds are Colorado State, even though they're locked in after the win, the element of distraction could affect them a little bit more, especially because what we've seen from Texas so far, they've literally reached out to one transfer on record and that was Amari Williams from Drexel so for all I can see this staff is locked in on this year winning right now and I like that 
And so I think Texas has a good shot tomorrow. Yes, Colorado State won by 25. But there are some good mismatches that I think the Longhorns can reap the benefits of. Let's move on to our score prediction segment. How much is Texas going to win or lose by, and how does that score come about? I'm going to pick Texas in this game. I did in my bracket, which is on Twitter. I think my bracket, I called it the right picks just because I think it's, <laughs> I, I really like this bracket. Um, it's going to get busted tomorrow anyways, but um, I like Texas in this game. You know, I think what makes the difference with Texas for me is that they've got two, maybe three March basketball players. Guys that are made for the tournament. Max Asmus, Dylan DeSue, and Caden Shedrick. Now, Caden Shedrick, we only have a small sample size because we got one game from him last year when Furman broke Virginia's hearts. But you've got Max Asmus, who has been lights out in the tournament every year that he's been in college. You've got Dylan DeSue, who was kind of just exploded out of nowhere last year and torched everyone in March before he ended up getting hurt and maybe prevented Texas from that injury might've prevented Texas from going to the national championship. And Shedrick, who, like you mentioned, had the, had the impressive double double performance against Furman. That was kind of his coming out party. And, and really quick, don't forget about what Tyrese Hunter did in the NCAA tournament when he was a freshman at Iowa state in their first exactly. round game against LSU. He willed them to a win with 23 points, five steals, three rebounds and three assists. And he hit some huge shots. So if we're talking about guys who have shown that they can do it before in March, Tyrese Hunter should be mentioned. He should be, but I think his inconsistencies are a little bit too much of a red flag for me in this situation. Um, you know, I think the the situation he was in at Iowa State versus where he's at now is is night and day different. So I wouldn't, I personally wouldn't categorize him mm. under that like March player um, category, but. I do think that that means something, and it has to mean something if Texas wants to win this game. I think they do. I think by four, uh, they're able to edge this one out over Colorado State. And like you mentioned, Nico Medved uh, should have a higher caliber job next year. What he's been able to do, and he and his staff have been able to do to identify talent, build a solid roster, it, it, it's really impressive to watch. And, you know, he a, a program like Michigan, for example, would be very lucky to have him. We're going to get some fantastic coaching matchups in this year's NCAA tournament. Of course, we are. We got some great ones last year. Uh, Obviously, Texas faced off against Colgate. They're very well coached. And then they faced off against Penn State, uh, who had Michael Shrewsbury at the time. He was one of the biggest uh, movers during the coaching cycle, moving to Notre Dame. And then they faced Sean Miller at Xavier and then Jim Laranega at Miami. So this year, it's going to be Nico Medved in the first round. Great up-and-coming coach at Colorado State, guy who's won before he's been there. And then we have possibly Rick Barnes in the second round. And so we are going to reserve any talk on that game until that matchup is actually set in stone because there's no guarantee when St. Peter's is playing Tennessee in March and Texas could very well lose tomorrow. And so my score prediction for what might be the only game of March for the Longhorns, I don't think it will be because I think that they have the guys, they have those guys with March DNA, as you talked about. I think Caden Shedrick has his biggest game as a Longhorn tomorrow. I think that Max A. Smith, he's been out of his shooting slump for a little while. He hit some big shots at the end of that K-State game in the Big 12 tournament. It just wasn't enough. But I think he has really figured something out. So I'm predicting a big game out of Max Asmus, a big game out of Caden Shedrick, a good enough performance from the Texas defense, and a gritty, gritty 64-61 to 61 win that free throws decide at the end of the game. Because I think if Texas is going to win in the NCAA tournament, we've talked all throughout this show all year, about, oh, they have to do this, they can't do that. If they do this in March, they're going to be screwed. If they don't make their free throws, they're going to be screwed. So I'm going to predict that if they hit their free throws down the stretch, they get Max A. Smith to the line, Dylan DeSue to the line, and Tyrese Hunter, who's been up and down at the line this year, he's going to have to be aggressive and get to the line in order for Texas to have a chance to win the game. Those three guys get the job done at the line, especially towards the end of the game. Texas will win this one and move on, move on to face Tennessee or St. Peter's. Crazy. It's going to be exciting tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, obviously, the NCAA tournament, the first round tips off tomorrow at 11.30 Central Time. I always call this a national holiday because it is. And so, to finish off our show today, Tommy, you tell me your four Final Four picks. We did this before the season, so I want to hear who your picks are now. 
All right, yeah, I'm I'm sticking with the pick that I made. I think it was what November that we made our national championship picks. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um and I am holding strong by it. Final 4. I've got Yukon winning the East. Uh, that's a that is a gauntlet of a region and it makes me a little bit worried that that uh, UConn be in the national championship game again because if they can get through that region, they should be able to beat anybody. But I've got them making it through there. I got Arizona coming out of the West. I think Tommy Lloyd has the guys this year. Caleb Love has been playing fantastic. Um, out of the Midwest, I've got Creighton. I talked about this on the last episode. I think the Blue Jays have a really good <laughs> shot. Greg McDermott has done a good job. They've got quality players all over the place who can step up if one guy's not having a good night. And out of the South, big blue nation, Kentucky. Kentucky's my national championship pick over UConn. I've got the Wildcats winning another one under Cal. I can really respect the fact that you made that Kentucky pick months ago at the start of the season, and you are sticking by it. The team performed well enough for you to uh, go through with the pick here a day before the NCAA tournament. They That's can't play a stuff. lick worth of defense, but if they score 200 <laughs> points, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've got, so I'll, I'll, I'll start by saying I've got Kentucky in my final four too. That region was the hardest for me to pick. I've got Kentucky and Duke um, in the elite eight. And I went with Kentucky because I don't want Dillingham and Shepard and Wagner to be hitting all these big shots. And I'm just sitting on the couch like, yeah, God, I've been waiting for this all year. Like, no, like I, I'm, I'm going to ride the Kentucky bus. And then I've got North Carolina as my one of two one seeds in the final four. I think that they've been hiding in plain sight all year. I'm excited for one last ride for RJ Davis and Armando Bacot. And I think that Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram were great additions this year. And then I also have Illinois making the final four. I just love their seniors. I love Shannon and Domast and Hawkins. And I think that UConn, this is more of me picking against UConn against FAU. I didn't have the balls to make that pick on my bracket, but that's a horrible draw for UConn. And FAU could very well knock them out on the first Sunday of the NCAA tournament. My national champion pick and my final final four pick is Purdue. I think that they're on the revenge tour. I think that they got the beneficiary of very good matchups. Guys who can't, like TCU, they can't guard the post. They can't guard the two-point shot. They can't rebound. That's a horrible matchup for them against Purdue. So I think that Purdue has the most clear shot to the Sweet 16, and then it's all history from there. If they are a team who's going to win the national championship, they will win those two games, obviously. And so that's my final four. It too is up on my Twitter. So excited for the rest of this tournament. It hasn't even started yet. We will talk about that Texas game on Friday because it is a later game on Thursday. So we will have a show up on Friday. Win or lose, Tommy, my fingers are crossed. And my hands are locked right here in a praying position, hoping that we get at least one more episode to talk about a Texas win and to preview another Texas game. And if we don't, it's been a pleasure talking Texas basketball this season. That's it for us today. Hope you enjoy the NCAA tournament. Hope we're here talking another game in just two days. Thanks for joining us.